Welcome back to the channel that loves technology and that loves you, our viewers. Today, we have a camera comparison between the iPhone 11 Pro Max versus the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. That's a mouthful. So for the sake of this video, we're just gonna call it the Ultra and the Pro. Do more pixels mean it's a better camera? To help answer this question, we're gonna run through the typical camera shots and create some unique challenging situations in which technology between these two powerhouse devices can really step up and shine. But are they up to the task? The Pro was released on September 20th of 2019, compared to the Ultra that was just announced on February 11th and released shortly after on March 6th of 2020. So how can last year's flagship compare with this year's flagship device? Let's find out. The Pro's main camera comes with a triple 12 megapixel setup, an ultra wide, a wide, and a telephoto camera. There's all sorts of technology built into both of these cameras, but I won't bore you with all the details. The Ultra's main camera has a four lens setup with a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 48 megapixel telephoto camera, and a 108 megapixel wide angle camera. Lastly, there's a depth vision camera. I always have a hard time with that word, <laughs> which can judge the depth and distance. It uses light speed to measure distance. So there's all sorts of cool technology. It's just, it's insane. Now that we've met these two amazing cameras, let's see what kind of pictures they actually take. This first picture here is a typical scene at any table at any restaurant. The only major difference is now you're going to find some Lysol wipes on the tables because we wipe everything off before we touch it because it's just safer that way. The Ultra gives you this bokeh effect without it even being a bokeh or a portrait photo. And I contribute that to the 108 megapixel sensor, which it's on this camera. It's absolutely huge. If you haven't seen it, go check out my other videos. I talk about this sensor and this camera at length, but now we're comparing how these photos compare against the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So which one of these do you prefer? I know we're on picture number one, but just kind of think about it in the back of your head. Which one do you think looks better? Now here we have a, just a regular photo shot in the car. I like to call this the seatbelt selfie. Which picture do you think excels? Which one do you think has better imaging? It really is a toss up and a lot of these photos are going to come down to personal preference. Now this one, I was slightly disappointed and I will share with you why. This is actually a portrait shot. Now the S20 Ultra did not really give me much of a uh, depth to field perception and the iPhone really excelled in these close quarters. So big thumbs up to iPhone there. Almost seems like the Ultra didn't even activate, which I will tell you that sometimes I am slightly disappointed pointed in that the live focus effect with the Ultra. Here we just have a picture of a car checking it out inside of Best Buy's parking lot. The next picture we're looking at that exact same car except now we're activating our ultra wide. We are getting in our super wide photo. Look at those skies. Look at the clouds. Look at the yellow Best Buy signs. I mean there's so much going on here. So much to enjoy in this photo. So here is my little park scene again with the Mountain, pretty good distance away from me. You can see the clouds, you can see the blue, you can see the sidewalk, you can see the greens. Now here is me zooming in 10 times, which is as much as the iPhone will permit. All right, now my next scene is zooming in 30 times, which obviously the Ultra will give me that 30 times goodness. And now even a little bit more, we are zooming in 100 times. So it is absolutely insane how close up we are able to get at the distance we are at. Over on on my right, I have the Galaxy S20 Plus 40 megapixel front facing selfie cam. Booyah! Over here, I have the iPhone 11 Pro Max. For all the people that climbed up on the Note video, no, none of my lenses are dirty. This is how they both look. And honestly, just me looking at both of them, they both look phenomenal. I'm really having a hard time deciding right here with my shades on which one of these I like better. So what I'm gonna have to do is get back into the studio, upload, download the footage, and actually see which one I like the most. Thanks Nomadic Gear for supporting the channel. I'm kind of known for spending a ridiculous amount of money on luggage and high-end backpacks. Then I came across Nomadic Bags and I absolutely fell in love with the Nomadic Backpack and now I'm in love with the Nomadic Care 
Ethereum Pro. This is a two bag in one type of deal and it will not disappoint you. If you're in the market for some new luggage, a messenger bag, or a backpack that's big enough to take on a trip and still carry on the plane, then look no further. Take a moment and check them out. Link is in the description. Don't forget to click on the red sale link at the top of the page. You'll thank me later. Back to the video. This picture is a lovely picture of a beautiful steak over at the uh, restaurant. Everyone at the restaurant was amazing. They wiped down all of our menus and handed them to us. So people are definitely stepping up, taking precautions and being extremely welcoming. And in exchange for us showing up, we got a marvelous dinner with fantastic service. Now I'm starting to get hungry. So uh, good shout out to Ruth's Chris for making that happen. This was kind of a tough shot. And the reason that it was a tough shot is it is completely completely dark in this area, but it's lit up by this ambient color changing type of fountain type stuff. And I love going here. I love going here at night because I get to get shots like this. The iPhone, I feel kind of saturated this photo a little more than it needed to be. I don't think that there's a clear winner here, but I want to know. Head down to the comments. Let me know. Picture number 19. Which one do you think is the winner? I think a lot of these are a toss up until we get to the tough shots, which we're about to get to next. This is a low light picture taken with night mode activated on both devices. Now, night mode activates a little differently on each phone. With the Ultra, it can sense that it's nighttime and that will say, hey, do you want to take a nighttime shot? Whereas the iPhone, I kind of got to wait to see if it's going to come on. And if it comes on, I got it great. If it doesn't come on, I can't turn it on. But if it comes on, I can turn it off. And that's one of the gripes I do have. Very Apple-esque to think for you. We're going to tell you when it's appropriate to use this function on your phone, on your camera. You don't get to pick for yourself. And that's one of the gripes I have with Apple's night mode. The Ultra, my opinion, is a more realistic picture of what is going on. If you look down at the Pro on the bottom, I feel that, yeah, last year this was a cool picture and it was in my camera comparison too. But it's bringing the light and it's like enlarging on the light all around it. Whereas the ultra is saying, hey, we got a light here. We're illuminating some things. The house over into the, off into the distance on the right hand side, you can see that light. But on the pro, it's like artificially enhanced. And that's what I don't like. They're all artificially enhanced. However, I just think that the iPhone is trying a little too hard when it comes to night mode. And it's like, chill out a bit. You know, the picture can look good all by itself. Now here, I actually made a little note and <laughs> it's, <laughs> you can't even see me in the bottom one. Uh, but you can kind of see off in the distance, the light from the house, no flash, no light mode, just taking a selfie in the dark backyard. If you have the ultra, you're going to get a photo. If you have the pro, you're not going to get a photo. This is stepping it up a little bit, activating the features, right? On the top, we have the ultra with night mode and the bottom, we have the pro with no night mode. Something to think about. Now we've got a side-by-side -side comparison. I activated the flash and what I found both cameras did extremely well. Well, is they illuminated my face. The shirt was black, so that's kind of tough. But I also feel the color temperature of my skin in the Pro is a little redder than I normally am. Whereas the Ultra picked up a more natural look, which I was a little surprised by that, but it was a welcome surprise. This was a tough shot. And what I mean, what I said earlier is these cameras basically take the same picture until you start activating those features. One of my faithful subscribers, viewers, and commenters had talked about the Ultra not being able to take good close-up shots. And I wanted to put it to the test and I wanted to share the results with you guys. So here's a close-up, kind of see what he's talking about, right? But the pro decides what the subject is and it just focuses on that. And I feel like in this picture, the little plant on the left was the subject where everything else has a little bit of a depth to feel perception. And this is what happens when you activate that 108 megapixel lens. Whereas the iPhone on the bottom, you're left with super clear, clean, crisp everything. Now, same exact location and we're boom, activating ultra wide. These are the same lighting conditions, mind you. No flash on, no change in lighting, nothing. Same exact location. And the ultra picture, my opinion, looks 
10 times better. The iPhone looks darker, it looks cooler, and maybe you like those cooler type of photos. But here, I think the Ultra takes the cake here. Now we're going for the super close-up, the macro, if you will. We've got our little artificial plan, our Aperture Lights remote, we've got our little BB-8. Look at the plant. It's clearly a different color. The remote, I mean, these are just two completely different color sciences going on here. And it's like, I prefer the look of the Ultra over the iPhone. The iPhone's still a good, clean, crisp picture. No complaints, no problems. But if I have to choose which one I'm looking at, I'm looking at the Ultra. Now guys, I did a video comparison between the Note and the Ultra, and everybody has all sorts of stuff to say. Everyone says that my lens was dirty, that it was foggy, and I'm here to tell you guys, it was not. The conditions we were in, that's the way the picture came out. It's a new kind of Samsung night to where you're willing to defend the Note 10 Plus at all costs. Well, it is what it is, guys. I take my camera comparisons over multiple days, over multiple camera shooting conditions, multiple weather, skies, all that stuff. In that video, the Ultra highlighted how good it looked. In this video, while I was holding it, I actually thought the iPhone 11 Pro Max was taking the better picture. And it wasn't until I actually got them home downloaded, uploaded, reviewed, and watched them. And I'm like, holy crap, I actually think the Ultra looks better. Which one do you think looks better? Let's take a look at these clips right now. All right, so here we are starting off uh, both phones at wide angle. All right, both are at wide angle. Now we are moving into 10 times zoom because that is what the iPhone is capable of. 10 times zoom. That's the side-by-side -side comparison of this. Uh, anything else, the S20 Ultra is definitely pushing further the limits with 30, 50, 100 times zoom. Holy smokes, there you have it, folks. Let me know what you think. Go down to the comments and tell me, hey, Aaron, those last two video clips, I prefer the iPhone. Or, hey, Aaron, I prefer the Ultra. If you haven't noticed, I respond to just about every single comment that comes through, unless it's mean and vulgar and gets hidden by my filters. But I usually respond to every single comment. So let's have a discussion. Let's have a conversation. Let's be friends. For the love of tech, if you didn't know, I make YouTube videos every single week, sometimes every single day. And I would love to have you part of the community and part of that discussion. Go ahead, hit the subscribe, thumbs up, follow, like, share, all that goodness, and come and be part of For the Love of Tech community. Till next time, namaste.